Moving on to Britannia, where we've been joined by Mr. Varun Berry. Keep in mind, Britannia's stock soared 15% after the company posted their better than expected first quarter results. The company did report a 13% jump in its uh, June quarter net profits, driven by volume growth. Uh, Mr. Varun Berry, thank you so much for taking time out to uh, join us here on ET Now on uh, earnings with ET Now. Firstly, take us through the top line growth driver. How much has come through volume growth and uh, how much uh, through price sites? So 100% has come through volume growth. So if you look at our results, 8% uh, is our volume growth and so is the revenue. So uh, this quarter was, uh, we, we actually weren't able to get too much of pricing going. Uh, we were only able to get uh, some of the promotions that we were running out. Uh, and hence, we've, we've seen everything come on the back of uh, volume growth. All right, uh, you mentioned that uh, category growth has uh, remained uh, subdued. Uh, now, tell us, uh, could you tell us uh, you know, which categories are these and uh, what exactly has caused that and whether the weakness will continue for going forward from here on? Well, I'm a born optimist. Uh, I do think that uh, the weakness will not continue. While it has continued for a long time, uh, I do think that uh, a good monsoon uh, coupled with the seventh pay commission, as well as uh, you know the government's action, uh, I've started to see uh, a lot of action from the government, which you know which hadn't happened. I guess they were consolidating their position, but of late, uh, a lot of lot of programs have started to get executed. So uh, you know all three of these are going to lead to uh, demands coming back. I would say it's not going to happen in a hurry, but I do think in the next couple of quarters we will start to see. Uh, much better growths in the category. Uh, could you tell us uh, which are those categories? So uh, we operate in uh, categories which are in bakery and dairy, uh, essentially. So I do think that uh, you know the biscuits, cakes, and rusks will start to see some um, you know uplift as far as uh, demand is concerned. The worry really is going to be in the international markets because we've got a fairly large uh, business. Uh, I won't say a very large business, but large enough uh, in the Middle East and Africa where we've seen some uh, currency crises as well as certain markets completely closing out. Uh, so that, that I do see a, a little bit of a, a weakness there. But overall, I think domestic uh, demand will start to come back. Uh, and, you know, we have uh, the world as our playground as far as our international business is concerned because, you know, there are lots of countries where we are not available. So, uh, you know, the objective will be to make sure that we increase our footprint uh, and get to more and more countries and uh, get more demand going even in the international markets. All right, you know, will the price hikes you've undertaken uh, or plan to undertake, uh, you know, cover the all-important rise in input costs? Also, are you worried about the market share losses uh, due to price hikes? So, uh, I, I would say that uh, the price hikes that we are taking are uh, fairly strategic. We are taking it in the right segment, um, the right pack, the right geography. Uh, however, uh, you know the onus is on the market leader to make sure that they take the you know the take take the price uh, hikes. Uh, you know I think over a period of time, uh, the the pricing competitiveness will come back uh, as far as we are concerned. So uh, you know it, it's it's not a situation where we feel that you know this is going to get uh, you know to a situation where we lose share. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, we will remain competitive, uh, we will take this strategically and uh, we think that because of the inflation in most commodities, it will be imperative for competition to follow us as well. Right. Right. Now tell us, do you think you know, the input costs uh, will continue to see more up move uh, going forward? In light of that, uh, what exactly is your cost saving strategy so to speak and uh, what do you target to your medium to long term margins to be? Yeah, so, so we don't give an outlook, uh, Krishna, but what I can say is that we have, uh, we have always had a very strong uh, cost-effectiveness program, as we call it. Uh, we try to find at least 2% cost savings year on year on year. And this is not cycling the savings that we got from 
last year. These are fresh cost saving. Uh, and you know, after what we saw of the commodities uh, this year, we've hiked that to almost 2.7%. So we are looking at getting 2.7% cost saving uh, you know, throughout all lines uh, of our PNL. And I'm happy to report that we are moving in the right direction as far as the cost savings are concerned. So the price hikes, uh, strategic price hikes, coupled with our cost effectiveness uh, projects, uh, we feel good about where we are at. Um, and I do think that uh, we will have to concentrate on you know, more and more of what we've been doing, which is getting better execution in the marketplace. Uh, and I do think that's helping us uh, ratchet up and keep our head ahead of competition. Uh, uh, you were talking about uh, the African market. You know, tell us how much do Africa and Middle East uh, contribute uh, to the top line? Could you quantify the hit uh, you've taken in terms of top line growth over there? No, so it, it's not. It's not a large part of our portfolio. It's probably about four percent of our total portfolio. But uh, you know, every part of the business counts, um, and it is a profitable part of our business. So uh, we, we do want to make sure that we don't lose uh, you know, any part of our portfolio in a year like this, where demand has been slight, slightly stymied versus what we'd expected. Um, and you know, that's the reason that we are looking at uh, every possible uh, potential country uh, for our international growth. You know, advertising and promotional uh, spends have also been an area of uh, continuous uh, expense. Uh, you know, for uh, you know, what is your plan there, and in terms of uh, distribution as well? Could you give us an outlook on that? So, uh, as far as distribution is concerned, we are continuously moving upwards. So, in the first quarter, uh, we we've, we've uh, gained about sixty thousand outlets. So we were at 1.26 million uh, when we ended the last year, and now we are at 1.32 million outlets directly. Uh, and our total reach, including our indirect reach, is almost at 4.7 million outlets. So that is one area where we've been really pushing hard. Uh, our spends, you know, despite... Uh, so what's happening is that it's a situation where uh, the demand is not as per what most companies have expected. So as a result of that, uh, you know, everyone's trying to get, uh, you know, volumes out of uh, giving discounts and, you know, trade loads in the market. While we've kept our belt very, very tight on that, uh, we, you know, despite competition's aggression in that area, we've kept our belt very tight. Uh, and you know, we've countered that through our execution, which is, uh, you know, the gain in distribution through the innovation and the new products that we've launched. Uh, and that combination is working quite well for us. All right, uh, Varun, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you this. You know, the monsoons have been uh, good so far. GST is a step closer. The seventh pay commission is all in place. Uh, you know, in this context, do you think that uh, you will be able to top this volume growth for FY17? How exactly is the Q2 shaping up? No, so we don't give that uh, outlook, uh, unfortunately, Krishna. So I, I can't tell you that. But uh, we will uh, make sure that we put all the right efforts to get the volume, get the revenue, and get the profits as we move forward. All right. Uh, one last question before we let you go. Tell us, uh, what are the new categories uh, you're planning to enter? We know uh, that uh, you know, you're going to be youth-centric and stuff, uh, but could you be more specific? So the first stop for us will be to make sure that within the bakery segment, there should be no sub-segment which we are not present in. So if you were to look at the bakery segment, you will see that there are certain sub-segments which are emerging. Right? So uh, rusk, cake, all these are emerging segments. We dominate them. So we will continue to ratchet our uh, you know, performance in those segments. But there are certain other emerging segments as well, like, you know, filled croissants. Uh, it's a segment which is emerging. So we are looking at how do we uh, partake in that uh, segment. Uh, there are certain value-added uh, cakes. There are certain value-added uh, desserts, uh, so to say, which are also emerging. 
So those are the, those are the uh, segments that we'll partake in first. But uh, as I've said in the past as well, the objective really in the long term is to become a total foods company. So we will continue to look at even adjacent segments, uh, adjacent in the snack category, adjacent in the ready to eat, ready to cook category, uh, adjacent in the breakfast category, and see which are the segments that offer us the right potential from a volume as well as from a profit standpoint. And we will be very happy to enter those segments. Uh, and especially now when we've got a great R&D center in Bangalore where we have the capability to produce and test all these products with consumers, I think we will be in a much better position to decide the right segments for ourselves. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.